All right, Nabusha Medisa, thank you tonight. Let's turn to this now. A leaked draft report by the Department of Basic Education for an inclusive environment has come under intense fire from some quarters. The report seeks to motivate for genderless and unisex toilets and changing rooms as well as individual stalls. In its quest for gender neutrality, the draft policies also suggest the abolishment of gender-specific pronouns and gender-neutral uniforms. Joining us now to share their views are FF plus spokesperson on basic education uh, and uh, MP, Dr. Vainan Boshoff, ACDP leader, Reverend Kenneth Mishwe, and DA Khao Teng, Shadow Education, MEC, Kume Ramorifo. And of course, we'll take your thoughts as well. Where are you sitting uh, on this particular debate? What are your thoughts on the introduction of gender neutrality uh, in our education system? 072 110 5584 would like to hear your thoughts. Gentlemen, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, for joining us uh, today here on In Focus. Uh, Rev, let me begin with you. I mean, uh, one would say this is a conversation that is not unique to South Africa, unisex uh, uh, bathrooms uh, or washrooms or locker rooms or change rooms, or whatever you want to call them, uh, is becoming a norm in an ever-evolving uh, uh, society of the globe. Why has this caused such a, a noise in South Africa? Reverend Mishra? Listen, please. Yes. Will you please increase your volume so I can hardly hear you? All right, I'll try again. I'm saying unisex bathrooms uh, uh, may really soon become a norm in, in all of the world, not just unique to South Africa as the world evolves and uh, societies are thriving for, for equality. Why has this caused such a debate, this leaked document in, in South Africa? I think before we think about what's happening in the world, we need to think about the welfare of our children, the protection of our children. South Africa has one of the highest race statistics in the world. We have children who are being raped in schools. And when children are raped in schools, even when they're using separate bathrooms, it's going to be worse when they use the same bathroom. If a girl leaves a class and says, I want to go to the toilet, and a boy says, I also want to go to the toilet, the teacher is not going to follow them to see what happens. So I think government is being short-sighted to come with such an idea. They cannot and they should not compare themselves to countries that do not have as high rape incidents as we have in South Africa. The protection of our children is much more important than trying to be like the rest of the world when they know how to protect their children. And yet in South Africa, they don't know how to protect their children. Right now, actually, if you read the Sunday World, this past Sunday, the Sunday World newspaper, on page 7, there is an article there about parents of three boys who are, who are suing the Department of Education. 40 million rents because of their children who were raped on school premises. Mm. So if you say... Children, boys and girls, meet together, and you have children who are raped. I think that is irresponsible. Before we think about trends in the world, let's think about how to protect our children. It is painful. Uh, it's painful yeah. to hear about a boy, 14-year-old boy, who wants to commit suicide yeah. because he was raped at school by three boys. Right. Okay? So when children are raped, and when you have a conviction rate, of less than 10% for rape in South Africa. We need to think twice before we compare ourselves with countries where rape is almost non-existent. The, the conviction rates are very, very high. In South Africa, less than 10%. So that's why the ACDP says, don't be irresponsible. Don't try to be like the rest of the world when you have such rape cases that you cannot bring right. down in South Africa. Right, we know right. that the president, right. among other things, yeah. has said gender GBV, gender-based violence, is a pandemic in South Africa. Mm. So it is irresponsible and it is wrong for government to start talking through the Department of um, Education that children can only use one bathroom. Because from schools, 
It's going to go to the malls. From schools, it's going to go to all the communities. And South Africa, even if in future that might happen, right now I can tell you it is not ready because we are failing to protect women and children. Protests because of GBV are endless. And yet government, foolishly I believe, wants to do something that they will not be able to control. Children need to protect. I'm going to come back to the question of protection and readiness in a moment. Kume, let's bring you in here. Is this a rights issue? Is this a safety issue? Why is this um, policy being proposed? Yeah, uh, Tavo, in recent years, schools have faced growing demands from transgender learners to be recognized and be accommodated on the basis of the gender with which they identify rather than their biological sex. So this one then... It's a challenge for schools which are battling in terms of four, which will be able to accommodate all the learners. So from the day we recognize that, uh, you know, uh, we need to ensure that uh, the Department of Education try to provide a guidelines with which parents and the community will be able to engage and be able to accommodate learners who uh, will try to identify themselves so that they don't discriminate the basis that they are chose parent biological sites, but if we cannot provide facilities which accommodate them, we continue to discriminate them. So we have the view that you know, the department can uh, you know, provide necessary facilities or resources. So in, I mean, what we are saying uh, from the DA point of view, you are not going to share you know, like your uh, bathrooms uh, where they were designed to be for girls and for boys only. So when you want to accommodate unisex, so it means that this will be separate uh, you know, bathrooms which will be used by those who prefer to choose themselves or identify themselves differently. You also recall that uh, uh, we've got a huge problem when it comes to uh, your LGBTQ uh, community, that they are discriminated. Some of them, they are dropping out of the system because they feel like they are not accommodated. Yeah. So we believe that, you know, schools are able to, I mean, come up with policies, procedures, so which will be able to accommodate all learners so that there's no discrimination on any ground. And we believe that as the Constitution guarantees uh, all the rights for all our kids, so we need to ensure that schools are also facilitating such opportunities for our, all our learners. So we believe that uh, this uh, proposal is not to say you are going to divide the current uh, you know, uh, facilities and say uh, they are all not unisex. So you just need to identify the ones which you need to do. Yeah. But that responsibility, we urge that school governing bodies should take such responsibilities because we believe that they know better and that's why they are, gov they are given responsibility to govern the school. But what we need is but sort is of a guideline. Is, 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 is that in, in practicality, though, Kume, not also in itself going to cause discrimination? So if you're saying there is now a cubicle for males, females, and a cubicle for uh, unisex. There are those who are in schools who uh, probably have not come out and they, they don't want to be stigmatized. Now, if you have created this cubicle that they now need to go to, is that not going to lead to some form of discrimination also? No, no, no not what, I mean, we believe that uh, you actually expanding choice so that, you know, those are currently forced to use the ones which are there because there's no option. But if you desire one which are unisex, you go there, you know that you are alone, you close it, so there will be no, uh, you know, uh, more learners using such a facility. Uh, it will be one uh, cubicle which one is using. After that, you lock it, then it's safer. Uh, so that's why I think you are continuing with the ones where, you know, they are designed for girls and boys, uh, but it will be just issue of choice to say, if you prefer to go to the single one, that's fine. The facilities are there. Yeah. Rather than what you currently have where uh, you are forced to use what is designed. If it's for girls, uh, you have to use for girls. If it's for boys, you have to use for girls. So from the deep point of view, we are saying what we want to encourage is choice and still make sure that we guarantee the rights of these learners so that they should not feel discriminated. Rather, they believe that their rights are guaranteed and they can be able to exercise in schools, not what we currently have. And we are saying, I think, uh, as emphasis on school governing bodies to say, you understand the community which you serve. Can you design policies? But at least the Department of Basic Education must provide guidelines so that at least schools will be coming up with a policy informed by 
what is practically able to be done, and if there are resources which are required to do so, then obviously the DBA, I mean DBA, will be able to provide such assistance. But we are saying let's have one choice and make sure that schools are accommodative to all learners which we have, rather than they have a situation where some of them feel discriminated. Let's take a break. We'll come back to Dr. Boshoff. We'll give you a chance as the Freedom Front Plus to also weigh in on this conversation. What are your thoughts? 072-110-5584. One debate being for safety of uh, learners in school in a country that is rife with gender-based violence. Uh, the ACDP saying it would be an irresponsible thing to do to introduce unisex toilets right now. The Democratic Alliance saying it's a good thing in terms of expanding choice. We'll hear what the Freedom Front Plus has to say in a moment. What are your thoughts? 072-110-5584. We're back in a moment. Welcome back. You're live on In Focus. We are with uh, Dr. Vaynan Boshop of the Freedom Front Plus, the African Christian Democratic Party leader, Reverend Kenneth Mishwe, and DA Gauteng Shared Education, MEC Kume Ramurifo. And the conversation is on the non-gender specific uh, bathrooms, locker rooms, and change rooms uh, in our schools. Dr. Boshop, what we are hearing is that the debate uh, rises, one, on the issue of rights, uh, uh, for transgender and non-binary uh, and people who identify as either gender who are feeling unsafe uh, in our schools because they are not catered for when it comes to, to bathrooms. What does the Freedom, Plus, uh, Freedom Front Plus say? Yes, let's start with the whole thing <clears throat> where you started uh, in the intro and that uh, it is not just a case about bathrooms. It, there's no bathroom guidelines as such. The whole uh, document is guidelines on the inclusion of people with different genders, um, and that is a system-wide thing. So uh, teachers are, are instructed not to use words like boys and girls anymore because there might be others. You might also not say boys and girls and all the others because then you are discriminating or you are pinpointing the others, uh, and it's... Uh, uh, about pronouns, it's about what is on the school's register, but what do you call uh, a certain learner, um, a, a word like a date name, the name that was assigned when the child, a child was born, but now he or she has chosen another name. So it's an all-inclusive, and of course, uh, sports um, participation, because there might be some problem with, uh, let's say, somebody who's still hormonally speaking, uh, male, but uh, she wants to participate in female sports, and 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 that has some uh, problems. So we thought about just bathrooms. Bathrooms is an obvious um, place which is gender divided in any in well anyway. Uh, although that is, as you mentioned, internationally being changed, and even in South Africa, we often see that the disabled bathroom is unisex. So we have to look at this whole thing uh, from a, a holistic perspective, and exactly that is a problem that this was not published. If the Freedom Front didn't uh, uh, receive the document from somebody and then uh, made a press statement and discussed it in Parliament, then this debate wouldn't have been ongoing yet. And uh, yet, as I understand, the department plans to implement this by the 1st of January next year when the schools reopen. Yeah. So this is a, an essential thing. You know, it, it's fundamentally changing the school environment. But the department thinks that it can have a document which is by November not yet circulated. Although, with the question that I've asked, more than 30 million rand has been invested yeah. in this. Yeah. Now, into what? We have a 23-page document which, you know, look at, looks at uh, international uh, conventions and South African laws. And, of course, we as a Freedom Front support the, the whole idea that uh, regardless of what you identify as and what your gender is, you are entitled to a good education, the best that can be offered. So that is not the problem. Nobody is saying somebody who doesn't identify with a gender assigned with birth um, should not be in school or should not have the right to school. But if you want to change the way in which school works, then it must be a public process. Okay. Then if you invest 30 million rand, what has happened to the 30 million rand? Maybe they have already produced the learning material. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe, I don't know, I mean, it's not enough to, to, to use 30 million rand to, to build toilets because you'll j- just build about three or four schools' toilets for, for 30 million rand. But in terms of documents, so what we have is a department who wants to get this policy to completion and then voila, present it to the schools, yes. and it has to be implemented. Oh. So we want the, the daylight to shine on this document, on this idea. We want communities to, to talk about it. We want school governing bodies to think uh, to what extent are they in a position to deal with it. We still have pit toilets in South Africa, yet we want to have... Uh, I mean, just uh, think of the area needed within a cloakroom. If you have a, a, a need a cubicle for each person with a toilet and uh, enough space to, to, you know, to put on your sports clothes or whatever. Um, so this has to be discussed. And that's where I, I want to thank you right. and other members of the media who put the, uh, you know, the sunlight upon this. Document. So, Dr. Boshoff, what I understand, your, your, your issue that you're raising is uh, the, the gender-neutral policy lacks at this particular point for thought and, and consultation. And as the Freedom Front Plus, you feel as though it's, it's, it's just being rushed and being shoved down the throats of, of, of uh, people in, within the education system. Exactly. It happened three years ago with the comprehensive sexual education um, uh, plans that the government had. And I believe the minister maybe didn't even know exactly what's, what were in those documents because she ridiculed it in uh, the, the, the problems or the, you know, the, the problems being named in parliament as people not wanting to call a but a but, but to say it's something to sit on. Yeah. That was not what was in the documents. Right. And probably she didn't even know it when she responded in Parliament, but it was about to be implemented. And then there was such a public outcry that it was put on hold. I don't even know what the exact status of that is at the moment. Right. But that is exactly what is needed. If we say the uh, authority uh, for schooling resides with the school governing body, then they have to have time to uh, study these things, to you know discuss it also with the community, and then one can negotiate the process okay. forward. Right. Rabbi let's bring you back then. The issue that you are raising of protection of children, it seems to be the, the, the issue that is principal uh, at the top of, introduction, of, the, of the introduction of this gender neutral uh, policy. For example, instances when in, in schools transgender uh, pupils are feeling unsafe and unprotected at, in, in, in the bathrooms and in the, in, in, in the change room areas. I, I think that reasoning doesn't hold water uh, as far as I'm concerned because Tabo. If you say transgender people don't feel safe, what do you mean? Are they written transgender on their foreheads? If a man goes into a toilet, nobody asks them, wants to find out, are you transgender? Are you a real man? What's happening? Because it's not written on their foreheads. Um, I don't think that that um, argument holds water. The fact is, government is failing our people. There are still thousands of schools that are using pit toilets. There are still thousands of schools that are not having proper sanitation to an extent that there are children who still go behind the bush. After almost 30 years of ANC rule, when they made one promise after the other, that bucket system will be eradicated, there are still schools in South Africa that are still stuck with buckets. And now they want to come up with something else and say, Let's make special toilets for where people will feel comfortable. Ladies and gentlemen who are listening at home, let us be realistic. People need proper sanitation. What government is talking about, that there are so many millions, they are going to build special schools for these people, they, that money is going to be stolen. We are living in a country where we have thieves in all government structures. Thieves, they steal. So rather than them trying to do something else that they did not promise when they were contesting elections. They promised proper sanitation in all the schools. They are not saying anything about it. Yeah. So we are saying to the ANC, start by fulfilling your promise. 
eradicate pit toilets, eradicate buckets in the communities yes. so that people can have their integrity, sorry, their dignity restored. A person who is using a bucket system and children who are still have to go behind the bush, girls hiding from the boys, boys, you, you know, it is undermining their dignity. So the ACDP is saying, parents out there, you will never have the majority. This I can tell you, Cabo. You will never have majority of parents who will say, we agree with these people. Let us not confuse our children. Right. Children, when they grow up, even before you teach them, a boy knows that is a boy. A girl knows that is a girl. So rather than focusing on helping these children who are being confused by what some people are saying, let them get counseling and they be helped. Because if they want to use boys' toilets, nobody's going to stop them. If they want to use girls' toilets, nobody's going to use what, to what, stop what? them. Let us improve. The last thing. Yeah. Let us improve the the results of our schooling. To have children who are getting who need thirty percent to pass a grade, 30 percent only, and they want to compare to schools that are taking 70 percent, 80 percent to to pass. I think we are really putting the cut before the horse and we are confusing our children. Let's educate our children so that we will produce scientists after matric. Those children should be able to go into university and be able to continue with their studies rather than have bridging courses all the time because we are producing children whose focus is not on improving their studies but on how do I feel today? Do I feel like a boy? I need a special toilet. Do I feel like a girl? Because this gender fluidity, gender fluidity, that depends on how a person feels on that day. It is but, wrong. But, but, but would it, would it, That's would it, the right thing. Children must know God created a boy and a girl, a male and a female. Wouldn't you say that those who want to do that and that feel, they feel is their orientation should be given the space to do so? Just for example, like Christians would be given a space to, to express their, their Christian faith and it is their right to want to do so. And therefore we should be able as a nation to expand uh, choice for, for those who choose to identify as gender neutral? Everybody has the right to express themselves. That's what the South African constitution gives them. But to come now with a third, another class, and you are saying they are going to feel protected, when other boys are going to say, hey, bona, 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 he's going into that toilet, so it means... He's not like us. He's different. He has changed. Yesterday, he was in this toilet. Uh, the next month, he's a different one because that is what those gender fluidity are doing. Those who are believing in gender fluidity. It depends on how I slept. I woke up feeling like I'm a man. I'm going to dress like a man. Next day, I woke up feeling like a girl. I'm going to dress like a girl. This is bringing confusion in communities. Let's teach our children. Let's guide our children. Children need guidance. Don't just say a child will grow up and just do anything you think they need guidance. And parents who are not guiding their children are irresponsible, that's my opinion, and also teachers who don't want to, to educate their children and tell them about true creation. God created a male and a female. That must be taught. To say we are not created by God, so we come from monkeys. I'm not, I didn't come from a monkey. I was created by God in his image. So children must know right. that they are wonderfully created by God, okay? And he created us male and female. Let's correct those who want to confuse society. We are not confused. Let's help those who are being confused. Kuma, let's bring you in here. There's a, an issue around forethought and consultation being raised by Freedom Front Plus. Uh, but secondly, ACDP raising the, the question of putting the, the cart before the horse. Uh, rather use that money actually to, f to finish the schools that still need Correct. to be finished, uh, uh, fix the pipes, give people sanitation before running into building another cubicle in our schools. Yeah, uh, I think we, we agree that we need to workshop uh, you know, these proposals so that uh, education is a societal issue and uh, society as a whole needs to understand what is being proposed. Uh, we believe that this should not be seen as something which is being imposed. So the call is to, I mean, to ensure that, uh, you know, we call our communities to make or to participate in the, this proposal. As I've said, uh, you know, lately there's a lot of calls to make sure that uh, schools are accommodative to include all the learners. So as the DA believes that, you know, individuals sometimes identify with a gender that differs from their biological sex. So we could not actually dictate and say, you know, this is what you need to believe. 
but we need to give them that choice uh, and we need to provide uh, you know uh, access especially when they are full so if the, the, the facilities are given for them uh, we believe that uh, we will be actually protecting their rights so as we have said uh, you know the our belief is that uh, this is not going when you uh, you, you 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 provide uh, unisex uh, uh, bathrooms you are actually uh, dividing you know you know girls and boys and say uh, there's no more girls and uh, you know boys toilets uh, that's not uh, what we have in mind so our thinking is that you are just expanding so that uh, those who prefer unisex then that opportunity will be there so uh, i i don't really agree with the with the reverend when it comes to this uh, but we believe that uh, when we consult widely and give a school governing body opportunity uh, we believe that those schools will then make that determination but you need uh, to provide a framework uh, as the department so that it provides such guidance so that schools are not uh, confused or not knowing how to deal with these challenges uh, and i believe that there are a number of issues uh, so this is just one of the issues and we believe if there are challenges you need to come up with a solution so this is not a substitution of you know not building uh, additional schools uh, not providing uh, basic water or basic electricity in our school so it's just an item which is dealing with a particular challenge so we're not substituting all the other problems with which our learners are facing in our schools so what we want also is to urge the department to uh, prioritize you know the school or the environment where learning and teaching is taking place so our view is not uh, this is not a substitute that because we've got other challenges, uh, those challenges are now forgotten. Uh, we're just saying there's a need. Let's look at this need. How do we then uh, I mean, provide or make provision for those who are really looking at this? But it's not really, I mean, really suggesting that all the other issues which we have in our education systems uh, are not there anymore. They are still priorities. They still need to be prioritized. But in this case, we're saying there's a need. We need to make sure that we protect and uh, I mean, the rights of you know, transgender uh, learners and we should not discriminate them so that they end up dropping out of the school or they no longer uh, participate in school activities because they don't find uh, you know any protection when they're at school so basically that is our point uh, Tawa. Yeah. Uh, we're not substituting all the other problems which you have uh, we're still going to ensure that we advance them and ensure that learning and teaching environment is conducive uh, for quality basic education let's leave it there gentlemen appreciate your time thanks so much uh, for coming on to the vein and bosho for kumera munifu as well as uh, reverend uh, kenneth